good morning everyone and welcome to this presentation on solid edge simulation i hope this presentation will be interesting informative thought provoking and allow you to think about your own company processes in a different way you will discover the business benefits of incorporating fe analysis in the early stage of the design process and ease of use of this feature rich solid edge offering Here is our agenda for today's presentation. We will look at the trends and challenges that are facing design engineers. How Solid Edge Simulation helps meeting these challenges. We will take a look at how Siemens is responding to the challenges with capabilities that exist in the Solid Edge Simulation. I will take you through an overview of Solid Edge Simulation capabilities, business value, and a case study. and finally by the end of this session we hopefully have some time to go through some questions that you might have here is research from the everdeen group called cost saving strategies for uh, for engineering it clearly shows that regardless the state profitability remains a top priority for many companies they are looking for ways to deliver quality products while reducing the cost when armed with the right resources engineers are empowered to make better decisions reduce the cost and improve the bottom line of the company to understand the external factors driving companies to improve their design process a survey was conducted and were asked to pick top two pressures driving those improvements the top pressure is reducing the cost of the product it is currently the most important factor driving improvements in the product design much of the final cost of the product is determined by the decision an engineer makes during the design phase at number 2 is the need of the products to get uh, to uh, to get to market as quickly as possible this means uh, the engineers must find ways to take out cost of products without adding a lot of additional time to the overall development process balancing these pressures is a challenge The research indicates that making these trade-offs is a product design challenge. Looking at the graph, you, you can conclude that it's difficult to predict how all the facets of the design will come together in the final in the final product. In order to respond to these challenges, engineers need access to the tools that will provide them with ability to make the best decisions for the product. Simulation early in the design process gives them access to the required information best in class strategies are to simulate early and simulate often analysis of the best in class performers indicates a strategic emphasis on using simulation to gain better insight into the development or you can say the behavior of the product introducing this in the beginning of the design process is a key differentiator for success The best in class are also likely to implement a get it right for the first time strategy. This refers to the use of simulation throughout the process of design to correct the performance of the product before any physical prototypes are built. So what exactly are these issues that are being faced by the design engineers today? The job that today's engineers are faced with has to cover a multitude of tasks. in all phases of the product development including analysis this also involves the use of several products each with its own user interface and a method of working often tasks like simulation are outsourced which has an effect of separating the analysis phase from the design process this re this reduces the number of analysis that can be performed and prevents analysis from being used for investigative studies which which overall inhibits the 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 innovation in the design process some of the solutions available today are overly simplistic in their approach to simulation which can uh, which can also compromise the solution accuracy and create some of some misleading results the inability to edit geometry easily after analysis and lack of cad associativity with simulation inhibit the fast turn around necessary for timely and effective design refinement solid edge simulation is one single integrated environment with solid edge 
it is using the same underlying geometry and user interface as all SolidEdge applications. SolidEdge simulation is easy enough for any SolidEdge user who has the fundamental understanding of FEA principles, yet it is robust enough to service most of your analysis needs. By enabling engineers to perform their own simulation, more analysis gets done in less time. This also helps in improving the quality, reducing the material cost and minimizing the need of, for physical prototypes. This, this also comes with without incurring the high cost of outsourced analysis, which helps save a lot of money as well. The layout of user interface is designed to guide the user through the whole analysis process, which makes it easy to learn initially and one can always revisit if necessary. This slide shows you the, uh, the depth and breadth of the current SolidEdge portfolio. If you look at all the solutions highlighted in black, these were all launched in the last few years, so a huge investment from Siemens has been made into SolidEdge. Note that the SolidEdge simulation goes into the third column, specifically dedicated to FEA products that are a part of SolidEdge portfolio. Siemens recognizes the importance of delivering highly capable analysis tools to our customers. SolidEdge portfolio covers majority of the analysis needs encountered by our customers. Besides the mechanical simulation, there are tools for heat transfer, heat transfer analysis. The thermal simulation in the SolidEdge simulation is mainly focused on the thermal conduction, which is the heat transfer inside the objects. This helps users to simulate the thermal effects uh, to, uh, to the structure, such as thermal stress. The heat convection depends on fluid flow, thus it's important to simulate the fluid flow to understand the heat convection performance. The flow EFT is the fluid flow simulation solution. But this software can also handle the heat convection along with the fluid flow. SolidEdge simulation provides both automatic and, ma and manual methods of mesh creation with precise local mesh control for higher accuracy. Full complement of loads and constraints is available for defining realistic uh, operating environments. The underlying solver technology is, NX, is NX Nastran, which is an industry standard solver for finite element analysis. Variety of analysis can be performed including the statics, normal modes, frequency response, buckling and heat transfer. Users can interpret and understand the resulting model behavior quickly with the comprehensive graphical post-processing tools. And finally, uh, synchronous technology allows for history-free model changes, which, uh, which drastically speeds up the model refinement process. SolidEdge simulation can take the advantage of SimCenter Flow EFT uh, for SolidEdge, which is a part of SolidEdge portfolio. Flow EFT is fully, uh, fully CAD embedded uh, computational fluid dynamics software uh, that is used for analysis of heat transfer and fluid flow design. The key, uh, the key features of Flow EFT are an intuitive user experience, which, uh, which, lead, which leads to a short learning curve. Uh, Flow EFT uses native SolidEdge CAD data, so there is no requirement for translation or fluid body creation. It, it allows you to automatically re recognize the model changes, so the geometry and simulation data are synchronized. It provides you with a fast automated measure. And Flow EFD also comes with a unique solver, which gives you some accurate results. Fluid pressure and temperature results can be easily imported from SimCenter Flow EFD for SolidEdge as structural loads for analysis. The integration between the two simulation solutions is seamless and easy, as both are fully embedded in SolidEdge environment. The simulation functionality scales from individual parts to analysis of large assemblies all the way to FEMAP with, with NASTRAN, enabling the engineers to define and analyze the complete system. FEMAP is widely used in the, in the aerospace, defense, marine industries, particularly for airframe loads and stress analysis, space vehicle stress and dynamics, and the analysis of full ship hull and the offshore, and, and the offshore platforms as well.
the starting point uh, for a fee model creation is the CAD model. Fee map can be launched from Solid Edge in the geometry model for the analysis. Fee map has some extensive CAD model cleanup tools, in depth functionality for mesh creation and editing. Fee map can also work well with orphan meshes for the FE model. The complete geometry and finite element models with, uh, with the boundary conditions and results can be seamlessly transferred from solid edge to fee map by saving the simulation model as a fee map file. Advanced types of simulation such as non-linear analysis, for instance, becomes easily accessible without losing any work done inside solid edge simulation. Let's talk about the solid edge packaging uh, for, for, for simulation. Powerful scalable solution offerings allow companies to select the best simulation tools for their specifics. Whether it is a linear static, a vibration or a heat transfer type of analysis, companies can save money by choosing the appropriate configuration for the simulation tools. Now let's take a look at the solid edge simulation in action. We, uh, we are going to take advantage of the tools available inside solid edge such as uh, simplify models as well as some additional portfolio products uh, for more accurate results. Here we have an excavator assembly and we'll be, we'll be performing the static structural analysis on the connecting rod, which uh, will give us an understanding of how tightly integrated the solid edge, uh, solid edge simulation is with solid edge. So here I have the connecting rod part in a new window. Just to, just to create a simplified model of the connecting rod, I'm going to delete all the existing rounds. Once I've deleted the existing rounds and simplified the simplified the component, I can come to the simulation tab. So when we start to create a new study, You'll see that we have different study types like linear static, normal modes, linear buckling. Then we have the steady state heat transfer, which is, which is also combined with the linear static and linear buckling. At, at the end, we have the harmonic response, which is basically the vibration, which is the vibration analysis. So under mesh type, we have the basic tetrahedral and then we have the surface mesh, which is basically used to create a thin wall mesh. Once we have selected the study type and the mesh type, you'll see that uh, how flexible and user friendly this, the simulation environment is where you have the option to add the loads and constraints from the edge bar as well as the command ribbon. So the first step to start a simulation is to, uh, to add material to the existing geometry. You'll see that I can simply add the material by fr from the material from the material library. And, and also have the flexibility to change the properties like modulus of elasticity, the, the Poisson's ratio, the yield stress, etc. So once I've applied the material to the geometry, the next step is to apply loads. So you'll see that you have a different options for loads like structural loads and thermal loads, depending upon the type of analysis that you're doing. So in this case, since I'm doing a static structural uh, analysis, I'll be using force as one of my loads. The workflow is again pretty, uh, pretty simple and straightforward where you simply select the face on which the load is supposed to be applied. Then you decide the directions. You also have the option to flip the direction in which the load is supposed to be applied. And then finally you can enter the value of the load. The next step is to apply the constraints. So I can simply use a fixed constraint on the two faces right here. You'll see how how straightforward and user friendly this uh, the simulation environment is. And finally, we can create a mesh. So here under the mesh, we have a slider which will give us which will vary from from a coarser mesh to finer mesh. To have a better control on the mesh, you, you can simply come to the options. From where you have the option for mesh sizing, you can set the uh, you can set a specific mesh size. You can set the refinement ratio, etc. With just a single click, um, uh, the software is going to automatically create a mesh and, and also solve the simulation. 
based upon the conditions that we have applied such as the loads and the boundary conditions which is the fixed constraint So once my simulation results are ready within which was close to 30 seconds I can I have the option to select the probe so probe is basically going to give me the particular stress values which in this case is the yield stress on that specific node and also I have the option to create a probe on all on a particular phase and just by hitting update you will see it will automatically populate all the stress values on that particular phase so th so this was the probe table next we have the option to control uh, the different ways to take a look at the results where so currently my contour style is set to smooth contour I have the option to create a, a dynamic contour where it gives me a real time view of all the stresses for this specific model. Apart from that, next, uh, we have the option to animate the results, which is, which is a pretty important step during the, during, the, uh, during the simulation. I also have the option to save this animation as a movie. At any given point of time, you can create a report in different file formats like the web page, the Word doc, etc. Just by simply clicking a create report, we can create a report which can be used for future references. So this is a simulation report that was just created. You can always save this report for your future use. Also, you have the option to decide the minimum and maximum values so in this case i'm going to select the factor of safety and if i come to this or uh, come to the user defined scale I have, I have the option to change the minimum and maximum values for this specific element for factor of safety now we are going to take a look at some of the more advanced way in which the thermal loads can be applied which in this case is heat flux one such way of doing this uh, via functions so i have the transient heat transfer, uh, heat transfer study open here right now and if i right click and start by creating a function initially i'm just going to change the name to breaking this uh, so this functionality gives us a more realistic way of applying uh, the loads so let's say at at time zero the factor is one which means the brakes were applied to its full potential same for 100 seconds at 200 seconds the brakes were released then again at 300 seconds the brakes were again applied but only 50 percent same at 400 seconds and again at 500 seconds the brakes released as I keep on entering my value you will see that on the right hand side the graph for factor versus time keeps on changing based upon the values that we have entered so let's save that and click ok now when you go uh, now when you come to loads under thermal loads heat flux here under uh, so you have the option first to select the face for the feature so in this case I'm going to select the face and now instead of applying a normal steady state load I'm going to create a function I'm going to select the function breaking that we just created and accept just to save us some time I'm going to load the results from the previous transient heat study that I made so this is how uh, the results are going to look like and this is the temperature distribution based upon the function that we have entered the uh, one of the most convenient and efficient way of looking at the results in this case would be using probe again in this case i'm going to use probe and select different locations 
on the on the component apart from that i also have the option to show all these values inside the graph so here as you can see for node 1 the values have been changed from time 0 to time 975 seconds and this is the temperature range that that's going to vary you also have the option to save the graph so this was one of the most important and uh, way in which in which you can apply uh, loads via function here we are going to take a look at how the how the additional portfolios inside solid edge like the motion study are closely integrated to the solid edge simulation so here i have a mechanical clamp assembly in front of me and we are going to be performing the simulation for the loads acting on the clamshaft part inside the mechanical clamp assembly so first i'm going to start with uh, with doing a uh, doing a random simulation and see how the assembly is going to perform we'll just delete this simulation and isolate the clamshaft part so in order to select the faces on which the loads are supposed to be acting i'll come to the joints here so first i'll start with the regular two joint so under properties when you go to fea i can select the load bearing face so in this case it's going to be the face that i just selected next it's going to be the fixed two joint and this spherical uh, this this cylindrical face is going to be the next load bearing face and then finally under the spherical joint again the same face is going to be the load bearing face so once i've selected all the faces i'll perform the simulation once again and then under the solid edge simulation static study I, I have the option to import all the loads based upon the existing simulation so i'll just go ahead and delete the simulation and, and and again isolate the part so in this case it's going to be the clamshaft so here you can see the red arrows indicate all the loads that are acting on the on the clamshaft assembly so i'll just close this and get back to the simulation so under simulation you can see all the different types of forces that were that were acting on the faces that were selected during the motion simulation study so i'll just quickly go ahead and create a mesh and use the mesh and solve option So as such, you can see that I have easily imported the results from the motion study. I mean the loads acting on the motion study inside the simulation without actually giving the loads inside simulation. So this is one of the greatest advantage of uh, close integration between all the different portfolios inside Solid Edge. So if I head back from the isolation, you can see the real time view of how this part is going to be acting. when it's under motion the flow efd inside solid edge gives you the option to import the results from uh, from flow efd into the solid edge simulation and we are going to see that how so here i have an import pressure assembly i uh, i'm just going to go ahead and load the results that i already have So once I start play, so once I hit play, you'll see that as the diameter of the pipe is reduced from a larger end to smaller end, the, the velocity has been increased.
So all these results can be imported from Flow EFT to Solid Edge simulation. In order to do, do that, you have to come to Tools and from drop down you have to select the Export Results to Simulation. And we are just going to see how to do that. So once I have my part, uh, I mean my assembly ready, I'm going to come to this drop down and hit export results to simulation. Once you get the message which states the export is successfully completed, you hit OK and come to the simulation. So under simulation, again, you do the same workflow, right click and select import the fluid pressure. And then you have to browse to the file. And once you select that, you'll see all the results have been imported inside the solid edge, uh, inside solid edge simulation. Now all you have to do is come to the static study, right click and solve. So this, uh, so this proves the seamless integration between the flow EFD and solid edge uh, and the solid edge simulation. So as such, you can see, uh, we have imported the fluid pressure forces into the solid edge simulation. John Harder and company is an example of a great success in using solid edge simulation for streamlining the process. As a result, uh, the design time cut down from four hours to 15 minutes. The job codes dropped from hours to 20 minutes, and we were able to meet the OEM with certifications. Another such company that benefited from solid edge simulation is Calder Limited. This is an industry which manufactures industrial machinery and heavy equipments. They also manufacture high quality pumping solutions. They were able to benefit themselves in the field of size and optimization, weight optimization, design integrity, and the materials uh, waste avoided are just few benefits to name. Let's sum up the benefits that our customers are getting from solid edge simulation. They are getting their products to market quicker by doing their designs faster. They are making more innovative and competitive products by improving the by improving the design and they are reducing the cost by doing more virtual prototyping. This brings us to the end of today's presentation. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, now we are going to open for any question that you might have.